This Week in Startups is brought to you by Masterworks, the first company allowing investors exposure into the blue chip artwork asset class. This Week in Startups listeners can skip the 5,000 person wait list by going to i.masterworks.io slash twist. Squarespace. Turn your idea into a new website. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial. When you're ready to launch, use offer code TWIST to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. And BetterHelp. Providing access to easy, affordable, and private professional counseling anytime, anywhere. Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash twist. That's betterhelp.com slash twist. Next up is Megan from Moment AI, facial recognition software that helps drivers. All right, I'm excited for this one. I love a little AI. She's taking the microphone. This is a legit founder who's serious about capturing your attention. That's a power move. Three, two, go. Uh, yeah, so my name's Megan, I'm the CEO of Moment AI. As you know, there's tons of sensors in vehicles right now, but uh, since 2016, it's still increase in accidents, mainly due to human error. And then you also have 7 million drivers that die, uh, drive with disability. I am one of those drivers. I uh, was told by doctors that I couldn't drive because I'm epileptic. So I decided to build technology so that I could. So um, this you see is monitoring distraction in the vehicle, and we use machine learning and deep learning, so our technology gets modeled with each and every driver. And we also drowsy detection, and we also uh, do irregular events. Uh, we can tell if somebody intoxicated when they have a seizure stroke, so they call it cardiac arrest, which is also on the increase right now. And um, after each and every ride that you do, you can see how your driver went. If you were getting drowsy during a certain amount of day, if they're improving and you need medical help, we also take actionable approaches. So with our partners, we also could take control of your vehicle, acceleration, lane control. Um, and we also, so we also are currently in public transportation and our partners with Edivia and Samsung uh, Harman put us in the pastoral, pastoral vehicles, but with government regulations, we had to create a dashboard to build it out due to government regulations for our, with our public transportation. So uh, currently, uh, t the main two uh, revenue strategies that we have going on, we have a pallet right now. It's a paid pallet, so we do have revenue coming in, uh, which have up to 50 vehicles that include the buses, the trolleys, so we also on the trains with Luminator. 80% of um, North America, then we also have Indivia and Samsung for our uh, uh, pastoral with B2BC. Okay, let's hear it for a moment. AI, well done. Next up is Juan from Dream On. Juan from Dream On. Great. I'm Juan from Dream On. We make a wearable and an app that help you fall asleep. Uh, here's a bit about our traction. We've raised over 375 on Indiegogo. We've shipped over 5,000 devices. And uh, we were recently featured on a show on CBS called Innovation Nation. What did that mean? We sold out of our inventory uh, over the weekend, and in the past six days, we've taken about 25,000 in pre-orders with a 12-week shipping time. Uh, we have patents in the US uh, and Canada. A um, bit about our team, myself, day-to-day -day founder uh, in operations, and we have a great uh, team of professionals, including Dr. Jerry Sonnen, who is a psychiatrist and helped invent the de device. Uh, about the sleep aid market, it is enormous. Uh, in 2023, it's expected to hit almost 200, 102 billion. Out of that, the sleep device category is the fastest growing category, grew by over 50% in 2018. Let that sink in. It's a 102 billion uh, estimated market by 2023. Uh, about the device, it creates a very gentle pulse that helps you fall asleep. It's extremely simple. You put it on when you're going to sleep and you focus on that pulse. It's a form of mindfulness. Uh, works by a scientific process called entrainment, where your brain is actually synchronized with the frequency of the pulse. Why can't you do this on the iWatch, Apple Watch, anything else? Uh, for various reasons, libraries are closed. Also, haptics tend to use battery life. So it's a very specialized and simple device. 
uh, our app supports it, and we're going into more of an app play for our version two, which we're working on. Uh, the apps are out now, native apps for iOS and Android, and a 30-day sleep program, which we're working on. And this is a bit about uh, how it works. Dream On could be one solution for people wanting to fall asleep without taking pharmaceuticals. I thought I'd give it a try. Uh, you can just put it on the, the palm of your hand, it's good. Ready and, to go to uh, sleep. Yeah, and when you're ready, you press the start button and focus on the gentle pulse. Okay. And uh, close your eyes and just relax. It didn't take long for me to give in to the pulsations I felt in my hand, and I actually really fell asleep. Okay, well done. Big round of applause Great. for Dream Up. And next up is Alyssa from Fume. Three, two, go. Hello, my name is Alyssa Hambrecht, and I'm the partner and COO of Fume. Not fume. Fume. Uh, our products are branded consumer goods and experiences, and we are selling weed, real weed here. This is a look at our three brands with trademarks. You want the samples? Duh. <laughs> I'll explain what those are in a second. Uh, these are the three brands we have trademarks on. Fume, starting with that one, it's our Pen Ultimate Super Luxury brand. It will feature Napa cannabis once we can cultivate there. Uh, we'll also have a groundbreaking edible program completely differentiated from what's out there. Grade is our premium negotiant brand. Uh, we really are building a platform here to tell the stories of the master cultivators across all geographies. And Symphony will match uh, music genres with experiences. So think lullaby for night night pot. Rock and roll for Go Dancing, Clean Your House. Uh, this is a fun brand all about music partnerships and built for scale. We launched the first product last year, Grade, specifically Lake Grade, because this is our proprietary cannabis grown in Lake County. What you're having there in your hand is the first product extension, pre-rolls in a cigarette format. All six SKUs will be statewide by next month. We have the brands, the IP, the access to channel, as well as DTC sales. Uh, the licenses and the vertical integration to really build an exciting group of cannabis brands and later retail experiences. This is a look at our performance. We'll do 17 to $20 million in revenue this year. We have three sources of revenue. And as you can see, the scale comes from selling our own brands. This is how we're gonna get to 100 million in short order. We are currently raising our Series A, $10 million raise at a $50 million valuation, which as of Q4 seemed a bit aspirational in the cannabis space. <clears throat> the use of our proceeds is all about continued capture of market share, uh, expansion into brick and mortar retail. Thank you very much. All right, well done. Apologies to the next cohort, because um, I'm not gonna remember any of your companies. Uh, Beautiful packaging, uh, yeah. Okay, so we saw three great companies, uh, Moment AI, uh, Dream On, and Fume, with the accent Egrave, I believe it's called. Am I right, is it accent Egrave? No, Thank you. Egu, thank you. All right, who do you have questions for, Dave? Um, Megan, congratulations with building this technology, um, especially to you know benefit you initially. Um, if you can talk just a little bit about um, how uh, how long till you get this product in market? You have it, the demo that you were look the demos that I was seeing was great. Um, when do you hope to be able to have um, a product that you can sell? Maybe you do now. I guess that. Yes, so we are currently in public transportation. We have 50, uh, where well we have up to 50 vehicles, so that's our paid pallet with Illuminator. Illuminator uh, is the number one North America uh, camel for the buses, trolleys, things of that nature. And uh, they control 80%, so we currently have that going on right now. And then uh, with Edivia and uh, Harman, we will be just selling our software, and then they, then they put it into their vehicles um, with like Volkswagen, who's their partner, and things, uh, their partners on their end. It, it, does it exist in order to, after a hard day's work as a bus driver, to then analyze the bus driver, or... Um, is it to in real time inform the dispatcher or the driver of their real time performance? And if so, 
how does that manifest itself in a product? Is it an app and you just put a smartphone facing you and it uses the camera or does it have to have a Wi-Fi connection? Yes, yeah. yeah, so all this is in real time from the public transportation and the passenger vehicles and the way that it works. Um, so Luminator, they provide the camels on all the buses and trolleys and trains uh, in United States and Canada. We just then put our software on it to monitor and by law it requires that camel faces the bus driver. So that's how we are capturing everything. So in real time, um, if a driver having something, the dispatch stops the bus. Where our passenger vehicles, we just connect to the sensors and the integrate our technology with um, Volvo, Volkswagen, and those people we actually already met with, and then their technology actually controls the money. But do consumer cars have a camera in them facing the cab? And I know the Model 3 does. That was a little controversial because they were using it for Century but you have the ability to turn off the dashboard. Are there any other cars that have a camera facing the driver? Yeah, so that's where, w how we work with Homer and Divya. We actually, they would be doing rear view mirrors and then we also looking to create uh, a dual mm. Uh, dash cam, but again, that's on their hardware part. We provide, so we not come out of pocket, we come to hardware, and mm -hmm. then they provide it. So then there's one camera facing the road, and then one camera fa facing the driver. Fantastic, well done. Thank uh, you. And what is the value of the pilot in terms of dollars? So if forty thousand dollars for this current pilot go that going out for the vehicles. Great, well done. Thank uh, you. How many full time employees? Oh, so there's two full times of police, me and my co-founder, Jacob. Uh -huh. And then we also have uh, a dedicated team, which we literally dedicated to this project. So they get paid um, for us and they do uh, both projects full time, the, pu the public and the pastoral. Amazing. Thank you. Uh, okay, dream on. Uh, how many of these watches are in market right now? What do they cost? Uh, 5,000 and they retail for 149. Got it. Um, and is there a subscription involved with it as well, or is it just you make the money off the hardware? Well, the business model slide, which I didn't get to, is hardware is uh, 149, and then the app, we're launching a, a sleep program, and that'll be a subscription model. Got it. Can you use the watch without the subscription? Yeah, originally uh, we launched it so that you could buy it for a loved one, and we had a lot of people, you know, I just want to give it to my 80 year old, uh, you know, grandfather, so that. Um, now, I think moving forward, we'll probably have it require uh, the, the uh, subscription, Great. or at least the app. I, I'm a big believer in the, in the sleep market, and so um, I think it's a great market to go after. There's um, lots, uh, there's also you know, a lot of people targeting this market because it's a big one. Um, and I guess this is the V1 of your product. Do you have um, additional plans to maybe enhance this product with uh, V2 or V3, or this, you know, the main thing is the, you know, the pulsing. Yeah, so we were gonna go right to a V2, improve the aesthetics, and also add uh, additional sensors. We're trying to keep the cost low, hardware cost, because we don't want to get caught up in that. Um, but demand has been so high with pre-orders, we're actually gonna do another V1 run. Uh, while we're designing the V2, hardware design cycle is a little bit longer than it takes, so you have people that just want to get it now. Uh, so we'll improve aesthetics. Uh, there's various sensor options that are fairly low cost, which will uh, really bump up uh, some of the, the tracking. Even though it's really designed to help you fall asleep, uh, the sleep tracking is something that people want, and they just want that to be as accurate as possible. How much money have you raised to date? How many full-time employees? Uh, crowdfunding has gotten up to about 375, plus we've had about 200K of profit on top of that, and then uh, employees, I'm full-time, uh, we are a bootstrapped uh, group, so we have a number of kind of part-time helpers. Have you considered, you probably know I'm an investor in Calm, or one of the first early investors, have mm -hmm. you considered, and we also are investors in Eight Sleep, mm -hmm. which now have like a 5% overlap because Eight Sleep relaunched like three or four nighttime meditations, nothing compared to what uh, Calm has obviously, and it's $3,000 I think, or $2,000 for, for the Eight Sleep bed, which is well worth it by the way, uh, it's amazing. Um, how do you look at competition in this space or partnerships with the headspaces and comms of the world? We actually, Alex, uh, too, actually ordered some devices from the crowdfunding uh, oh, operation, but it went to corporate office. We never, we were, you know, tried to follow up and say, how's it going? Yeah. Um, you know, we envision a lot of opportunities for partnerships. It's really about making those connections if you, yeah. uh, you know, wanted to. Um, also, for mattress tech, mattresses are very crowded right now. Uh, Eight Sleep has got a really 
you know, I listened to the story the founder Matteo spoke on your on your podcast, uh, and part of it is that people don't know it exists. They didn't know that Eight Sleep existed, so they went into mattresses. But uh, there are still a lot of mattress companies looking for tech to kind of augment, and there's yeah. other form factors that can go into. So. Yeah, so you could actually go to Casper and say, "Hey, would you like to include this technology and make it Casper branded or one of the other bed brands? You could white label it for them potentially or something." Mm-hmm. Okay, well done. I met an amazing company, I had coffee with the founder, and I was totally inspired. It's called Masterworks, and in 2018, you know, VCs invested over $100 billion in startups, but did you know there is a $1.7 trillion, T, trillion dollar asset class that is uncorrelated to public equities and has outperformed the S&P and has no institutional investors allocating to it. That company and that category is art. The company is masterworks.io, and it's the first company to allow any type of investor, whether retail or accredited, any of you can then go gain exposure to blue chip artwork. This year, roughly $68 billion in art will trade hands between collectors uh, all around the globe. Deloitte estimates the size of the blue chip artwork asset class to be $1.7 trillion, and all of these transactions are between individuals. There is no way to invest in this asset class unless you purchase painting. And Masterworks.io is trying to change all this by being the first platform to file paintings with the SEC. In the same process that a company goes public, they'll take an artwork public and allow you to buy uh, shares in it. Today, Masterworks has over 30,000 investors signed up and using their platform. So I want you to go to I, the letter I, dot Masterworks.com. Dot io i dot masterworks.io to skip the 5000 person waiting list they've got so many people interested in this that they created a special way for our listeners to jump the line because we don't want to wait in line it's a brilliant idea the founder's brilliant had a great uh, coffee with him when i was in new york and i'm, I'm really intrigued by this business and uh yeah stay tuned okay uh, let's get back to this amazing episode cool. all right uh fume Thanks. um i never take free samples of anything so i'll <laughs> But for this, I'm making an exception. No, um, excellent. Um, Sir Charles, you're in. Okay. Sun grown <clears throat> outdoor. Uh, so you're selling 17 to 20 million dollars. You did that last year? No, that's the projections for this year. For this year, year great. And we have three revenue streams. Got it. Hold on. Uh, how much ha- has this product hit the market yet? Yes, the grade eights, late grade eights, Got launched it. in July last year. We sell them on ease.com. Got it. How, what was the uh, first run of sales or the first six months of sales then? Uh, about $85,000. Got it. Okay. So you are ex- expecting explosive growth when the whole line came, comes out. Yes. 90% of our revenue to date is because we do fulfillment for ease.com. So when you are in Sonoma, Marin, Napa, Lake, Sonoma, Yolo, or Solano counties, and you order something on ease.com, are you familiar Mm. with ease? I have a friend who uses it. It's the world's largest legal retail channel in the world. And if any of you right now opened up the ease.com app and you ordered, it would be brought to you here within 20 minutes. So it's like Got Amazon it. for yeah, weed no, no, we, we meets know what it is. Lyft. Um, and so, so most of our revenue I mean, right now is, knows what it is. is a low margin, but it comes from delivering right, hold, for hold, ease. Hold on, hold on. You got to let me ask the questions okay. and answer my questions because we have limited time. Sure. Um, you're running, you, you, you're running Ease's delivery. Depots. Depots. Got it. But you're also making product. Got it. So the company's business is being ease as local delivery or making the products for all platforms. It's all both. about the brands. The got only it. reason why we did the ease uh, complication is for access to channel. Got it. I got it. Okay. So how does it explode up to 20 million in revenue from last year, the first product line being 180,000 if we doubled it? And it was we did year. 8 million in revenue in 2019. Oh, okay. But it's a not lot of money based delivering weed. Uh, but there was the, 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 that was the value of the delivery of the weed yep. of which you got paid how do they? How does Ease work with partners? They pay a Ooh. percentage, or they pay they can't per do delivery. a percentage. Not legal. Not it's legal. They say pay per delivery twenty bucks or something. We pay them. The revenue comes to us. It's a complicated model. Okay, well, we'll have to happy dig to deeper into. It you have questions, yep. uh, Dave? Um, I would just. Uh, I don't know this market very well, but I believe that I like how you were talking about building a brand in the market, mm-hmm. and I think that there are opportunities to build 
a strong brand. So Dosist has, um, I think, done a pretty good job, at least within California. Mm-hmm. I don't know what you think of that product. Yep, um, we sell a lot and, of it. And so um, I think, you know, building um, a brand could be a, a valuable um, investment. All right, well done. Let's give a big round of applause Thank to you. our three judges. Who's your, n- oh, you ready to go yet? You have your number one, two, and three here? I'm g- so some of this is, many VCs make personal decisions, and my reason for giving number three uh, is Fume is I'm just p- personally not a fan of pot than a believer in the business, but I'm going with number three for me. I went with three. I'm a little confused by it. We actually don't do, until there's a f- uh, like a national federal referendum, we've decided not to touch the product, although we do have one investment um, Kush.com, which is a marketplace for growers, sellers, processors, and packagers. Uh, so it's sort of more like an industry kind of platform. So we, we kind of felt more comfortable with that approach. Uh, who is your number two? Uh, number two, Megan. I see, um, you know, the benefit of technology uh, like this. It seems like insurance companies um, might like that. I you know, don't know much about having the government as a customer, but they have uh, understandably lots of drivers out there that they need to kind of monitor um, what and how they're doing. And so not really knowing the competitive landscape, but it definitely seems like, uh, you know, there's an opportunity. So I'm going with that for number two. Uh, and I had the same number two. I think it's early days. I'm interested to see, you know, the third and fourth and fifth test and if they move from pilots to sustainable revenue uh, which means we both pick dream on uh, what was your theory there on dream on I think we will just continue to see innovation um, around sleep I uh, I'm wearing the aura ring here the $200 device and the main reason for me wearing that is to actually understand just high level how much sleep I got in the night prior Um, But I've been experimenting with Calm and other meditation apps. And I think that consumers and even my kids, they're always on. And so the ability to kind of (laughs) stop and slow down is becoming more challenging. And so I'm a believer that more solutions need to exist in this area. Yeah. And obviously, I'm a huge fan um, (coughs) having invested in uh, two companies already in the space. And it felt like the timing for this product um, is just really great, both in terms of the market that was built out by Calm and Headspace and, and um, Eight Sleep, and also you're past the Kickstarter. You got some folks, so it feels like this is the time to invest in this business, um, which I, I felt similarly about. Um, you know, my other number one pick, Move Thirty Eight. People who can get through that Kickstarter to me show a certain resilience, a certain fortitude, a certain desire to see the product exist in the world because their products are there's so much pull for their products from passionate customers that they don't need to go the venture out or the angel route uh, to see them exist in the world and they're willing to just fight doggedly to get them out there doing this crazy you know kickstarter indiegogo approach uh, which is a lot of work you have to really want it so it shows to me a level of fortitude and resilience um, that I like to see in founders. So big round of applause for those three. Uh, oh. Next up, I dropped my weed. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, my cannabis. Sorry about that. Yeah. Um, so uh, next up is Stuart from Evolutions. We will put three, two minutes on the clock and speak right into that microphone so everybody can hear you. Three, two, Go. Hello, my name is Stuart Gill. I'm a co-founder of Evolutions App, a mobile marketplace for financial fitness. 75% of Americans report not having a financial plan. In fact, 27% when faced with an unexpected expense of $400 or more, we need to sell or borrow something. And how we're solving this is speaking directly the way our, communi- our community likes to speak through gamification. We're targeting millennials. So on our mobile app, you'll be able to monitor your financials. You'll be able to receive financial education, overall improving your financial fitness score, as well as having an organized document center, and finally connecting your team of financial advisors. So our business model is pretty simple. For users, it's either premium or premium, a $4.99 monthly subscription. And our financial advisors pay $69 a month to have access to our marketplace. Uh, we're 
targeting $284,000 in growth this year, our first year on the market, and uh, targeting also $23 million in total for by year four. With that being said, our persona group is the 85 million nationwide millennials, but with that being said, there's 202 million users in Los Angeles and Orange County who, who within the next 10 years will turn the age of 33, which is the median age for people, first time home buyers are also getting married. And then with that being said, there's also 2 million financial advisors in the areas of taxation, real estate, lending, and so on and so forth. But we've also targeted another six different verticals of financial wellness. Uh, our MVP launched yesterday morning at 9 a.m., so super excited about that. Um, we're doing five test cases. Each cohort has 20 users on it and four paid advisors. Um, this past year, we not only developed the MVP, but also did over 100 user surveys. And we now have $28,707 worth of revenue based off of that. Okay, well done. Big round of applause. Next up is Nadia from Kibi. Nadia, you have two minutes on the clock. Three, two, go. Good morning, everybody. My name is Nadia. I'm the founder and CEO at Kibi. My partner and I envisioned a world where people can work, travel, and live freely. Uh, an important part of this, uh, of this uh, mobile lifestyle is flexible housing. But traditional uh, housing markets are not flexible. Uh, imagine um, a traveling nurse coming from Texas to San Francisco. They wouldn't be able to sign a long-term lease. Companies like Airbnb have taken a big leap towards fixing that. However, as an Airbnb host, I very quickly realized that I need extra tools and hands. At Kibi, we offer the extra tools and hands. We built a platform that allows everyone to share the space uh, with services ranging from guest communication to seamless turnovers. We employ the marketplace model that allows for the scalability we were looking for. Today, Kibi operates nationwide with strong presence in metropolitan areas such as San Francisco, New York, and uh, Miami. In 2019, we more than doubled, reaching approximately 800,000 in revenue. This year, with uh, a strong team and a great product in place, we will focus on uh, spreading the word uh, through two channels, two main channels. Google AdWords, that has worked very well uh, for us in the past, and through a very generous referral program. Actually, we give any of you 100 for each client you refer to us for uh, unlimited uh, referrals. Please see uh, a presentation of our product. When you link your Airbnb account, you activate Kibi services, which happens with one click. After that, all the hard work, such as automated guest screening and cleaning scheduling, happens seamlessly on our backend. You can also monitor the quality of service provision, for example, see photos after the cleaning is completed. The app also contains a provider module where you onboard and get verified, you accept and reject service requests, and finally, you complete services, for example, submit photos after you clean the place. Kibi app is available on Google Play and Apple App Store. Okay, well done. Big round of applause. Do you want to turn your idea into a website? Do you want to blog and publish content, maybe sell products or your service, promote your physical or online business, or maybe you're doing an event or a special project? Well, Squarespace is the answer. If you want to have a beautiful website set up in no time at all with e-commerce functionality, their award-winning uh, customer support, and templates that are responsive and work on any device. Squarespace is beautiful, and it's all optimized for mobile, where most customers are coming from these days. You can also buy a domain and choose from over 200 extensions right on Squarespace. So it's so easy breezy. Boom, you get your domain, you get your website, you get your e-commerce set up, and you got that support if you need it. Here's a demo of Presh using uh, Squarespace's templates to build a beautiful photography template for his passion project, superhumanwallpaper.com, which showcases all of the Inbox Zero images that he gets at the end of the day. So go to squarespace.com right now for a free trial. When you're ready to launch, use the offer code TWIST and save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Go to squarespace.com, get that free trial. The website, it will look beautiful. Your website's going to look gorgeous. They have so many beautiful templates. And the best part is everybody on your team is going to know how to edit and clean and crisp up that website with new content whenever you need it. They just keep making the product better and better over the years. They are the gold standard for building beautiful websites. Go ahead and go to squarespace.com and get that free trial. Use the promo code TWIST to save 10% off. 
Next up is Rihanna from Journey Foods. Three, two, Go. All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Rihanna Lin. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Journey Foods, where we bring intelligent software to the food that we eat, to the makers of the food that we eat every single day. Uh, consumers spend three trillion dollars on food, uh, packaged foods across the globe, uh, and the makers of this food are trying to figure out how to feed eight billion people. These are uh, when I talk about this food, these packaged foods, these are Doritos, uh, plant-based burgers, CBD cookies. And at Journey Foods, we built software to help the makers manage the process of the manufacturing and uh, intelligent software behind uh, our ingredient portfolio, the products that they need to understand in terms of nutrition, pricing, and the sustainability of their products. Our intelligence helps them optimize the supply chain, also helps them manage any alerts around changes uh, in regulatory environment as well. Uh, we currently... Uh, the, in the industry uh, that I know really, really well, I've been in about 10 years, I'm a biologist, I've worked at Google, uh, there's $288 billion a year spent on R&D and IT uh, for the foods that we eat, and uh, we started charging customers about $199 to $1,099 per month to manage their products with great success. Uh, oh, sorry. Currently we have users uh, spending about $600 a month on average since July. Uh, we're pushing for $12,000 uh, and we achieved over $600,000 in revenue this year or in 2019 we're pushing for 3x that in 2020. Uh, 83 B2B customers, some of the most recognized brands across the world and uh, over 1.2 billion uh, units manufactured. We're adding on integrations to Google, SAP, and Alyssa is going to be our future customer because you don't want your products managed in Google Sheets. Thank you. <laughs> okay, well done. Big round of applause. <laughs> since you have, the, let's bring up the other two founders, and since you have the microphone, I just want to ask you a question, sure. which is, okay, I, um, towards the end, I got an idea of who the customers were. I got an idea of the revenue. I don't actually understand what the product does. Sure. So can you just tell me um, our customer blank has a product called blank and we provide the following for 12,000 a year. Sure, so uh, a customer unit. A real customer, like give yes. me a real one. Soylent has beverages that replace meals. We provide software that helps them understand the nutrition, the uh, everything about their product and their ingredients in the cloud. Many of these customers are managing uh, their product portfolios in Google Sheets without dynamic cloud-based insights and updates for so the- So why, do why does Soylent need to know their ingredients? Don't they have like a packaging partner who does this for them and they know their ingredients because they came up with the formula? Like yes. what are you telling them that they don't already know, I guess is my point. Sure, so we use machine learning to help them optimize the price, the nutrition, and uh, the sustainability of their products. Uh, if you go out and you want to launch a new product or you need to optimize that product, we're able to give you those insights uh, on demand. Uh, if a regulatory environment, environment so you send changes. The Soylent, they came out with a new drink. They would send you the new drink. You send it to a lab. The lab analyzes it, and then you do analysis on that. Or no, just we, they send we you? we analyze that in the cloud, so we actually save them time and money uh, through the data. So they that just we give you the ingredients, and then you analyze the ingredients and tell them something about it. Yes, and if they want to create a new product, we can we can create that for them with one two iterations without them going to a lab and using humans for that. Uh, so we, one more time, then, if you. Um, What's an example of somebody who used your software and created a better product because of it? Do you have a, so what's we, the best example actually, of that? We actually make $15,000 a month with our own products, which was the first product that we launched. Uh, and those are Journey Bites that we sell all over the country and on Amazon. We were able to lower our price by 30% and, and lower our sugar by with data. What specifically? Like you replaced a certain type of sugar with another one that didn't affect the taste or something? We replaced uh, the type of sugar, we replaced the type of manufacturer, and we also replaced some of the ingredients in the stack that helped us lower the cost. Amazing. Okay, yeah. do you have any questions here? I, I think I might have clarified a little bit what they're doing. Good questions. Okay. Um, I think from a focus perspective, I think it would be beneficial to 
I appreciate the worldwide of eight billion and some of the big numbers that you had, but it 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 seems like it would be beneficial to focus it a little bit more. And then I'm agreeing with some of the questions that uh, Jason's asked. I think thematically, this market is a big one, and there's a lot of um, uh, opaqueness to the to the area. So. Um, I think it seems like it's it's a good target to go after, and it's just me understanding a little bit more about kind of the competitive landscape and how the companies are doing today. I don't have a specific question. Yeah, I, and I think this is important because when you have something that's groundbreaking, which yours seems to be, it falls into something we haven't heard before. How many people have heard about a product like this before? Raise your hand, and I might ask you the name of the product. Okay, no, one person. What's the name of the product you heard about? Do you remember the name? No, okay. So only one person here has even heard about it. They don't even remember the name of the company. So be self-aware that we've never heard about something like this. And this is one of those instances where you got to like kind of walk us through it with examples. So we always say in the accelerator, examples matter and really give us the most illustrative uh, example that is not just the lighthouse customer, the biggest name we know, but the outcome, right? That's why I sort of tried to get you to the outcome. What was the outcome of your software, the biggest impact it had in the world, right? So just a, a little presentation tip uh, for when you have something groundbreaking and new. Uh, and Kibi, this is another example where we were trying to figure out what the product actually does. Um, and we sort of got it a little bit from the demo. But give us an example of your product in the world. Who is your customer? Why do they buy your product? And what's the outcome they're looking for? Okay, so the, 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 the client, the target client is someone who has a short-term rental property or someone who wants to have a short-term rental property but doesn't have the time to do everything it takes. Right. So when you have a short-term rental unit, there is a lot of things that, you, that the host need to do, from guest communication 24-7 to cleaning, uh, check-in, uh, pricing, all sorts of things. So this is a big friction that makes it impossible for most of the people to share their place. And this is where we come in. We remove that friction. So you make a management tool for the features that VRBO and Airbnb don't include with their tools is that right because they do provide some tools yes yes like yes, they yes. provide communication tools on both of those platforms with the person but you build a piece of software that helps me manage that communication better in some way or across both platforms actually it's not only tool uh, we do the, the actual work too oh, okay. so there's a so marketplace is that it's gonna connect you with a housekeeper ah. that is gonna go to your place and clean I understand it now. So it's when more your like guest a moves out got it yeah. yes okay. so, so it's a it's a marketplace totally. yeah and what so do you charge for the software or you charge for a percentage of the Marketplace. So it's a percentage. Um, so the margin mm -hmm. in the like hands-on um, services like check-in and cleaning is uh, 23 percent. Got it. And then the communication and pricing it's uh, nine percent. Got it. Okay. Well done. Any questions, Dave? No. Okay. And then uh, working backwards, evolutions, uh, Stuart. Congrats on the launch. Thank I you. was very impressed. Um, you know, it's early days and you're a little too early for us, but we like to meet folks who are doing what you're doing uh, early on because we like to understand how you're thinking about it. And the fact that you have a trial and you had cohorts and you had goals for the launch was impressive to me. And then this quick revenue, I wanted to understand you're a day old and you have 25K in revenue. Does that make you make 25K a day? What's that about? I wish. Uh, it's uh, 25, 27 to date starting. So we incorporated in 2019 of last year. Our original business model was transactional. So when a real estate agent, we got points on the real estate transaction. Ah, okay, so, so, so that's so legacy forth. revenue that right. may not have to yeah. do with this new one. So this new revenue is we have 3,300 per cohort. So we're, it's free for the users. And then the four advisors per each 20 are paying us 828. Got it. Okay, so, so now 15, we- So $15,000 with the first 100 being tested. Yeah, so uh, <coughs> important to make sure the revenue model's clear. Okay. Um, and here you had multiple revenue models. You're charging the customer 10 bucks a month if they want the pro version. Is that right? It's 499 for okay. the customer and then 69 for the, the, the advisor. Per customer? To manage their no, stuff? No, it's just a subscription. So basically at the end of the day, we're a lead generation company. Yeah, that's so what we provide got. the financial advisors leads. Got it. And they're paying $60 per lead or to just be part of the system? Monthly to be part of the system. And then with the new Privacy Act, it's if the customer, re the user requests the services, and then we send them leads. Got it. So people come for the education. Mm -hmm. 
uh, and then they can click to meet a financial advisor who then pays you right. if they become a customer. So part of our system is you once you log in, Jason, you'll receive, you do a little self-assessment, you get a financial fitness score, and you'll be like, man, I'm only ranked 37. And why is that? Because you don't own any real estate, you haven't filed your taxes in who knows how long, that kind of thing. And you go through our locks of education. Each point of that, you get more stars and goals and set up. And part of that is like, oh, you want to buy real estate? You need to take five meetings with realtors, that kind of thing. Got it. Can you refer me to a realtor? It's a natural training position. Dave, questions? FinTech is big. And um, I think that, I guess just so I understand the target customer today, you were talking about millennials and, and Gen X, but I didn't actually understand the dollar amount for the typical consumer that's signing up within your app. Like how much money do you expect them to have today that an advisor would be interested in managing or helping? So with that being said, our average median is probably about $55,000 income. Okay. But we're doing reverse engineering with most financial advisors focused on retirement and baby boomers. Right. We're trying to get the guys in early and our marketing campaign to the millennials is saying, hey, you want to do experiences this year? Here's how you save your plan. Here's where taxation will help you with that process. Let's get in real estate early. I may not understand why your life goal is to have your 30 side die and live in your mother's basement, but with our education, let's make sure you're on the deed of that household. And we're trying to really target um, financial advisors who are thinking long game versus short game. Okay. All right, well done. Let's give them a big round of applause. Would you hesitate to go to the doctor if you had a broken arm? Of course not. Well, your mental health deserves the same attention. BetterHelp is the world's largest counseling service for improving your mental health. BetterHelp will help you assess what your needs are, match you with a counselor from their network of licensed, accredited, and board-certified therapists, and start your communication with that therapist in under 24 hours. It's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's professional counseling done securely online. How convenient. With BetterHelp, you can access a counselor network with a broad range of expertise. So they have people who know how to deal with entrepreneurs or maybe family issues. You get the idea. And avoid the nine to five of traditional therapy and message your counselor anytime. A lot of the reasons people don't go to therapy is because it's too inconvenient. They can't get off from work. The time is hard to get on the schedule. Here, you're doing it remote. You're doing it over your device. And so you're going to be able to do it on your schedule. You can easily change counselors if needed for free. And you can schedule a video or phone session with your personal counselor. It is so easy to do. But I went through the process just to see what it's like. And it is amazing how efficient uh, and elegant this product is. It's worth checking out. Um, you'll never have to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room again, wondering if one of your friends is going to walk in. Instead, you're going to get therapy from the comfort of your own home for less than a traditional counselor cost. It's more efficient, it's faster, and it's even more affordable. BetterHelp's mission is to provide everyone with easy, affordable, and private access to professional counseling anytime, anywhere. So get started today. This week in Startups listeners will get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash twist or Use the code TWIST, T-W-I-S-T, at checkout. That's better, H-E-L-P dot com slash TWIST to get 10% off your first month. Thanks again to BetterHelp for supporting independent media like This Week in Startups and for helping people. Now comes the hard work. You're three, two, and one. So think it through. You start to do it with Evolutions, Marketplace for Financial Fitness, uh, Lead Gen Business Model, uh, Nadia uh, at Key B, uh, a marketplace for short-term rental support services, i.e. Uh, pricing and uh, cleaning. And then Rihanna from Journey Foods, uh, using metrics and nutrition tools to improve product development, make better products, uh, make better product decisions, and lower the cost of making those products through some type of enterprise software and or analysis uh, of uh, your products and advice. I believe it's software product model. Who's your number three? Number three, I'm doing uh, Kibi. Same I, for me. Yep. Uh, I do think that the, the pitch needs to be tighter to understand a little bit more about what you're doing and the differentiation from the existing you know, big players, uh, Airbnb being the biggest one. Yeah, and clarity is super important in a business. When an investor hears there's like two or three or four different products, two, three, four different ways to make money, it's concerning because it means you're kind of still triangulating and it maybe isn't ready to scale up. 
And so here, you know, the, there was a tool which complements the marketplace, and it was just a little bit confusing uh, in this format, so it could be tighter. That's something we work on really uh, diligently in the early days of the accelerator, and you come, you've been to almost every one, I think, or if not every one, and maybe you could comment on, you know, the, the Christmas of those presentations compared to, say, here where they haven't gone through the program. Well, I've always appreciated the the, uh, the education that you, that you guys give at launch, and actually, a lot of these have been really good. This one has just been a little bit confusing, and so it just it needs to be, hmm. yeah, crisper on uh, what Kibi was doing. So. Yeah, uh, and so your number two, number two, I'm doing a, a Stuart with Evolutions. Okay, I, yeah. um, you know, I believe in the fintech space. Uh, we led the seed and believe in uh, Digit.co, which is kind of a, a digital butler um, that's doing uh, very well. And um, you know, it's a it's a massive market. And I think there, my feedback is on the pitch. I would have a little bit more clarity on what you're doing within the seed realm. You had like four year projections, and you had large um, future forecasts, but for the most part, many of us seed investors are like, okay, if money comes in now, what's going to happen over the next year, year and a half life cycle? Um, and so I would adjust the pitch accordingly and just say, this is what we're going to do over the next year, year and a half. All right. Fantastic. And that means Journey Foods. Uh, oh, and mine was Evolutions as well. Same reasons for you. I think it's early days, but promising. Uh, and fintech's obviously big, and there's huge commissions and a lot of money at stake, quite literally. Uh, we both picked Journey Foods. Um, I, I just love enterprise software, and when it starts to get to this 50K a month range, that's when we find um, investors start to pay attention, maybe not Series A investors, but seed ones, and we've had great success with people in, call it ten to $100,000 in enterprise revenue going through the program, uh, being able to close big rounds, and so it's... It's, it's you're right in our sweet spot and you know 83 customers can't be wrong we talked about that earlier like five ten customers you can kind of fake it you can convince people if you're super charismatic delude them into thinking that they need the product and they don't actually use it 83 people are not paying for this product if they're not getting value that would be an extraordinarily difficult thing to do uh, to get 83 paying customers and 600,000 now that doesn't mean it's going to get to 60 million in revenue a year it could be a TAM problem here. There could be uh, people roll their own and competitive issues, but that's what we'd roll up our sleeves and try to figure out. Why did you pick Journey Foods as your number one as well? You mentioned that you worked at Google. I'm not sure what you did there, but many ex-Google uh, employees bring other team members. You mentioned it's a data play. Here you've got an old school industry of you know, feeding us all. And so I, I just high level, understandably, it's a massive market. I like the data play. I did have additional questions about you know, what your product is doing today, but just mixing those two, um, it's a massive market and coming at it from a, a technology perspective, um, I think you know, is, is, a positive, is, is a positive thing. All right, uh, now comes the hard part. I'll ask our number one vote getters. That's Aaron uh, from Nude Bar, uh, Jonathan from Move38, and Stella uh, from Stella Karakasi, uh, Juan from Dream On, and Rihanna from Journey Foods. Come on up. These are our top five, and we'll do our three, two, and one for this cohort as well. Um, this really is meaningless because all five of these are just so good. Just really great stuff um, that, yeah. Uh, all right. I think I've done it. Yeah, I, I did it. I did. Yeah, I'm done. I did it. I did it. I'm done. Yeah, okay. I feel good about it. Um, however, I'm just going to, again, caveat that this ranking means nothing. All four of these, all five of these presentations, all five of these companies, very real. And then some of them that were on the bubble who took second place is probably n no difference between the second and first place here. Um, who's your number three? First, I'll say congrats to all. I was really impressed with the quality of all the pitches, and it takes guts to get up here and do this in two minutes, especially with Jason saying, go, 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 go. 
So yeah, it's a little bit of a test. Everything's a test it for is. me. Um, and so, as I said, I appreciate uh, what Jason and Jackie and team do here. Okay, so I'm going with number three. Yeah. Okay. Um, a little bit, of, make it a little exciting. Number three, I would probably not need to see Jason wearing this in the future. But not necessarily but, not seeing me wear it to Burning Man this year. it is San Francisco. Oh, and we've talked about Burning Man. Yeah, I'm going this year. I'm coming back for my fourth swing at the bat. Nude bar. That's what I'm wearing to Burning Man. Maybe we could do this together. We could coordinate outfits. Maybe. Yeah, when they burn the temple, let's do that. Do you have... <laughs> there See, are men yeah, that no, wear I'm the sure. product. I appreciate I that. I am certain there are men that wear the product. Yes. Yes. I think these men are going to wear the product to Burning Man. <laughs> yes. If I invest in this company and you hit 10 million in revenue, I will wear them to Burning Man. Another celebrity. You can bank it. There you go. I'll put it out there. Uh, okay. And amazing. I had number three. I also I had uh, Aaron from Nude. You know, it's, we, oh, really? Wow. I did. And the reason is it's early days, obviously. And I think the direct to consumer stuff is very powerful. I think the world is going to find that although Amazon's running away with a lot of categories, they are building like the average generic product in a world in which people, a certain group of people, it may not be all people, want excellence. And they want to have somebody who created something that really thought about it. And the example I'll, I'm just pulling up here is Contigo. Like, I, I've been, how many of these have you been through? Like, and I found this company specifically has the most care and detail. And when I meet somebody with a Contigo, anybody have a Contigo? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Like, how many do you own? And how many people have you told about it? Seven? Yeah. Five? How many you own? You said you had the Contigo? Three. Three? Twelve. Twelve. And I have like 16. Because I bought them for the office. I bought them for the house. And I'm trying to get rid of them. My big hope for 2020 is uh, Trump is removed from office. Everybody uses a Contigo and stops using plastic. And three people stop shaking hands and spreading viruses and go to fist bumps. <laughs> but that's me. But I am obsessed with this, just like you are, because of the clickable lock and it's like once you get that sip out you're like you know is anything gonna come out here i could put this in my bag upside down with no fear with my laptop it means a lot to me that these people actually did this and then when you clean it like i, I mean i could shut i can't shut up about it i think that people like you who focus on a product like that and have that level of detail win versus the generics and quality will win and people will pay a premium for it because it doesn't matter if you pay five, ten, or fifteen dollars for this. It matters how much joy comes out of it. And for your product, it doesn't matter if people pay twenty, thirty, forty, or fifty. If they've been marginalized and haven't had any available, they're going to be delighted to pay you ten dollars more to have something for them, right? It really actually matters in the world that people are this focused. I just love the D to C category. Who's your number two? Sorry, I went on a tirade. Aerosmith. Okay. Um, <laughs> Dream On. That's all I got. Dream um, On? So Dream On, uh, the, um, you know, this uh, simple product, as I said, I think it's, it's a massive market. We're going to, we continue to see um, interesting go-to-market strategies in this area and um, consumers, athletes, businesses are going to be wanting to even offer this to their employees, to their athletes, yep. because their employees and athletes uh, will perform better yeah. when they sleep. Yeah, I think it's still the first inning for uh, sleep technology, and I think it's all going to come together. Uh, yeah, uh, and I had, uh, for my number two, I had Rihanna from Journey Foods. Um, the, the enterprise numbers, just like I said earlier, can't be lied, and... Uh, it can't be fabricated. People are getting value from this. And there's a lot of people building a lot of interesting food products in the market. And people are obsessed with it. And like the collective consciousness of what we're putting in our body is, um, you know, really becoming just really people are sophisticated. Right. And, and I think the people making these products are in like some arms race to be increasingly more sophisticated about what they're building and how they communicate it to users. So I really like that. Um, and my number one was then dream on, uh, to your number two, I think, you know, having some great success in this space, I could see this one 
being a no-brainer for people to try for $150. And if, you know, like Contigo, the second, third version becomes so good, people won't shut up about it. People will be giving it as Christmas presents. Or they'll meet somebody in their life who says, I'm having a hard time sleeping, and they'll just gift it to them. So it just feels like one of those incredible products. Um, who's your number one? I'm going with uh, Journey Foods. I think that um, there's going to be a lot of innovation we're seeing innovation, but there's going to be more innovation within the food vertical and having, um, if I understand the product, just more intelligence about the ingredients and uh, and being able to you know, look at the numbers, as I said, have it be a data play, but also um, you're going after such a large market. Um, it just seems like there's something there. So that was my number one. Uh, amazing. Um, and so we were uh, largely in sync, just had a different order. Um, and then I want to just let Jonathan uh, from Move38 and Stella from Stella Karakasi. Um, you're just a little bit earlier, candidly, when you compare your products and where you're at to these the three that we picked. It really is just at this moment in time, right? And uh, same with your AI product uh, for moderate people. Investors are looking to, when they pick what who they want to work with, they're looking f- at a system of you know hundreds of companies that come in every month and they want to get to know the founder and the company over time so don't give up keep making progress and keep sharing that progress another important message hey dave um you gave me great feedback on my company project out wanted to let you know that you talked about app stores and the developers. We have three developers. Here's what they said about the product. Here's how much money they made last month. Would love to get a cup of coffee with you anytime, anywhere, Marin or the city, um, and just uh, get 20 minutes of your time for some of our amazing advice because you gave me some of the best advice of my life. Like that's the kind of shit that flies with investors. That kind of considered nature. If you're a founder who wrote down, you know, I got to get back to Dave and put it in your calendar for six months from now and what Dave would want to hear and what would maybe unlock an investment for Dave, uh, or he picked you as number one, two, or three, or he gave you some great piece of feedback. That's the way to curate investors. People don't put any work into investors. They just, you know, send a thousand generic emails and, you know, it's like somebody applying for a job on Craigslist by just sending to whom it may concern, I'm interested in your job listing. And you're like, no, you're not. If you are, you would have read it and, you know, said cover letter is important and you didn't even read that, right? So really keep up with the investors and in a considered way. When people want an introduction for me, I tell them, hey, make sure you've watched the episode with Dave on the podcast, read his blog, followed him on social media, and then when you send the email, say, hey, you said this on social media about this company, we're similar to them and we're similar to your investment in this company from your first fund. And I really love this moment where you said, product is about X, Y, and Z on Jason's podcast. That's the kind of thing that would make you be more likely to hit the reply key, correct? Yes. Yeah. It needs to be personalized. I mean, I will say, and there are so many people raising capital today um, that, as I said, I feel bad because I'm not able to understandably say yes to everybody and I'm not able to even get back to everybody. But definitely the personalized email is is noted and I try to get back to all of those. And then just back to what you were saying, like, this is just a moment in time. I've got to make a gut decision really quickly. And, um, and sometimes it's hard to necessarily even, for me to even understand why I've made a decision a certain way, but it's just like, I've got to make that quick decision because there's the next entrepreneur who's going to walk in the door. Uh, and the one thing, have me being an entrepreneur previously, that I try to do is I try to make a quick decision versus necessarily um, dragging that entrepreneur on because as an entrepreneur previously um, I might go in and pitch and they're like you know I pitch but then I never nec- didn't get like a, a specific feedback of yes and no and so for me for the most part I just try to get to a quick answer yeah um, and and so, so that's why so the founder can move on and, and, and so the founder can on move another on. investor who yes. it might be a yes and it might be a Correct. better moment in time for them correct compare this moment in time 2020 investing environment in your life to the moment in time when you had your first and second fund and, and what time period was that how, how is your job different well i think th- the main thing we're seeing today is just a lot more sophistication with the entrepreneurs and the teams and um you know having um revenue in place and so when we 
started Freestyle 10 years ago. It was typically, uh, you know, pre-product. The companies were raising a million dollars and um, it was pre-revenue. And now you'll hear the terminology. There's like this pre-seed. And for the most part, when Freestyle comes in, there is, we're the first institutional round to come in, but in many instances, the product is early in market, there's some revenue that's flown in, you know, that's come in the door, and so we're investing a little bit later in the cycle. Um, that gives us just a little bit more clarity on how um, we envision things going. But the main thing with the pitch that I've said is it's really important, especially when you're raising from a seed fund, that if you go and raise $2 million, what can you do with that $2 million? And so it's like specific. There's the use of funds, which is kind of like a basic thing, but it's really like what are your goals um, with that $2 million? I think that's one of the most important things to convey when you um, pitch a seed investor. Awesome. Uh, let's give a big round of applause for our founders and to Dave. And specifically, want to thank uh, our partners for this event. Uh, thanks to Republic. If you're looking to raise money, great platform. We've had a number of people use it. Uh, and Ashore, um, who's just uh, one of our partners who allows us to do syndicates. And uh, Fathom Law, I had dinner with the, fa the founder last night, and uh, it's they're in it for the right reasons. 11 partners who, uh, you know, have great experience um, who don't want to be part of a big firm because they want to specialize in startups, which big firms have a harder time doing. Uh, and they usually put younger, less experienced attorneys on your project. So thanks to Fathom, Ashore, and Republic for uh, making this event happen. Let's give them a big round of applause. And uh, well done, everybody.